Nice to meet you. Uh, Brian got the slot right after lunch, so at least we're a little bit distancing from lunch. Actually, we're going to take, um, and Brian and, and IBM, of course, are uh, partners of ours, but we're going to take a little bit of a, a, a different, it's continuing that topic, but going to focus more around what's actually being deployed in real time and give you some uh, tangible examples around that. Um, so uh, talk about building conversations with voice and AI. Uh, how do I move this thing? I'll just do it like this, the old way. So let's just kind of put the, in context kind of what we are about. So Nextmo is a communication API platform. We have a whole slew of uh, communication API to basically make the life of developers easier, including messaging, which is both SMS but also OTT channels like WhatsApp and others are very, very um, wanted these days. Uh, we have a voice, WebRTC and PSTN voice. We have all kind of authentication APIs. And of course, now with the TalkBox acquisition, we also have WebRTC video that we're very pride, uh, proud to offer. Now, on the, um, on the other side, we basically mask the complexity of needing to connect to carrier networks, needing to connect to the OTT uh, uh, suppliers. On the partnership side, so we're not an AI provider. We actually go and partner in order to uh, get that. But we do have very easy ways to connect real-time voice directly to AI services. IBM is one of them, Google and, and others, and we'll go into a little bit more details in a minute. So we can very easily basically create a scenario that starts from real-time voice, goes to an AI service for transcription services, sentiment analysis, whatever you want to connect, and then continues to an agent desktop. And we'll see that in a minute. We also have connectivity to the data layer. So if you want to connect into the ticketing system, you want to connect into CRMs, you want to connect into your commerce platform, we have connectivity there. And we have a lot of sample code around how to do that. So that's kind of a, a, a zoom out, a kind of a big view of what we're about. Let's take one more zoom in into the AI space, because that's the one that we're talking about here. And basically, the ability to easily open up a voice call from your web browser, from your mobile app, stream it through, through our WebSocket implementation that allows you to do it in real time. So there's a lot of scenarios out there that you can do things post-call. But to do it in real time, we're quite unique there. And then you can very easily connect things like transcription services, translation services, natural language processing for smart IVRs and things like that um, to, uh, to the scenario. And either you end it there, or you can continue and escalate it to uh, um, an agent and, and uh, finalize the call with a live uh, discussion. So, so if we kind of take um, a flow of customer engagement from the beginning that the customer presses a button to call or tries to send a message. So the first uh, line of response we may be a smart virtual agent or another name that you, you hear in the, in the industry is smart IVRs. These could be developed by you guys. So you can go to the API level and develop and then go in and connect to uh, a service like IBM or, or other. Or we have also ISV, so some of our customers will say, I don't want to build it, I want to go and get a packaged app. So there's some ISVs in, out there that have taken our API and basically created that, created an ability to very easily um, uh, use smart virtual agents. That, of course, connects up to the AI layer. That's where IBM will sit and Amazon and Google and such and also connect to the data layer, right? So if a call came in and you want to look, who is this customer? How many times has he called me in the last uh, month? Uh, and start the, 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 que the answer with context, all those connectivities exist. The next step, let's say he didn't get his response, and now he wants to escalate to an agent. Again, there's a lot of uh, call center companies that embedded our APIs as part of their solution or have, uh, w uh, there's easy ways to uh, connect into the service clouds of the world and, and, and a whole slew of agent uh, desktop solution. Actually, the company also bought um, a, a call center company in the space called New Voice Media that's connected to uh, Salesforce. So there's also some embedded options that we have. And then agents may have 
agent assist solution that sit there and help them uh, do their job better. And actually, there's a partner of ours, I2X, that are here in the, uh, the crowd that do that very well with the ability to basically give the agent inputs. How is he doing? What are the words he should avoid? What are the words he should uh, use? And, and voice based that I know you heard from there earlier on today. So that's kind of taking it from the, the customer side all the way to business side. Now I'm going to uh, hand it over to Kevin that's going to take you through a specific example of a uh, uh, conversation box. Sure. Right? Thank you. So uh, I'm going to walk you through an actual implementation of one of these uh, voice bots or smart IVRs. But before I do that, I'm just going to kind of walk through what the customer experience is when they call in, right? So we're all really familiar with the pizza use case, which means you're dialing in, you want to order a pepperoni pizza. They don't, uh, you know, the pizza company doesn't want to pay somebody to take your order, they just want the order to show up in their point of sale system. So uh, in this case, the, the case that I'm actually going to build with you, we have a customer that calls in with an appetite, and an Exmo conversation is created, or, or really any conversation is created to be hosted on the platform. Okay, and so there's a connection that's made there. Another call leg is dialed out into the voice app. So this could be Watson, or this could be Dialogflow, this could be uh, you know, any of those kind of uh, uh, chatbot platforms that are out there today that have these phone gateways. So we've dialed in as a customer, we have the first call leg, and we've dialed back out uh, into the smart voice app. And then of course we're gonna just stream the audio from the Nexmo platform into the voice app for natural language processing and intent mapping. So when we understand the intent, we can do things like uh, action fulfillment. So when we're talking about action fulfillment, a lot of these platforms have webhook interfaces that essentially they'll call back out into your client, uh, your client application, and you can do things like send messages or hit those point of sale systems and store into the data layer that we were just talking about. And of course, hand off the call if that needs to happen, and disconnect this smart voice bot call leg, and then connect, uh, connect to the agent. I think the important thing to note here, though, is that the reason you don't just want to uh, use the phone gateway that exists on these, uh, on these platforms is because you don't have that low-level control of the conversation as it's happening. So you can't disconnect that call, so disconnect the leg that dialed out to the bot, and then dial into uh, you know, uh, any sort of agent interface, or uh, you know, just kind of manage the call at a very low level. So this is a schematic of some of the entities that are at play here. Uh, if we're starting at the top, and I'm not going to go through this entire thing and put everyone in the audience to sleep. I know we just had lunch, and uh, we want to see some code. So, uh, so here's a customer. They're dialing in. It doesn't have to be through the PSTN. You really just have to be able to stream the audio into a platform, right? And in this case, we're using Nexmo okay, as the voice platform. So you have that first call leg or the, uh, uh, the source of the audio initially. You have the platform where it's being hosted, and then you have your AI platform where everything's kind of being processed. So, so we've gone through some of these entities, right? You have the customer, you, the source of the uh, audio, you have your, uh, your platform that's, that's kind of hosting the conversation, and then you have the NLP engine that's happening. And of course, down the line, if you need a handoff, uh, you can always do that and maintain the context. So, uh, so what I've done is I created a Git repo that uh, you all can check out if you'd like to, and uh, just Git clone it in. So let's, okay. Anyway, I was going to show you that, but that uh, we're minimizing your screen here. So anyway, so what we've done is we've created a very simple server application, uh, and we're going to show you how to actually connect into Dialogflow uh, uh, really simply, okay? So what we've done is uh, we've integrated Nexmo as the voice platform here, right? So there's a, there's a node module that we pulled in in this case and set some different environment variables that uh, you don't need to worry about. But the things that you do need to worry about are this. You need to worry about uh, your answer and event webhooks, okay? And this is how you're actually going to control the conversation. So, uh, so essentially what's going to happen is you're going to have the customer who dials into a phone number, or maybe they're dialing into a, a conference, right? And you want to return back to the platform some instructions about how to handle this call. So in order to do that, there's this JSON object that we use. It's called the Nexmo NCCO. There's uh, some other people out there who use you know, voice XML, things like that. In this case, we're using a Nexmo NCCO. It's just a JSON object. So when you're calling in, you say where that call is coming from, right, and then where that call is going to. So we have that initial call leg into the platform. The conversation's being hosted. 
and then you're dialing out to the dialogue flow number. In this case, it's, it's dialogue flow, right? But it could be anybody. And then what you want to do is, in the event uh, webhook, you know, just kind of for, uh, for understanding what's going on during this conversation, this will log everything into, uh, into your server. So, uh, so I've set up, uh, just, I just set up an ngrok here, and I'm going to go into dialogue flow. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay. So this is where uh, this is where the Git repo is hosted. If you wanted to check that out uh, after the conference, it's just all well dash Kevin simple smart IVR framework. We'll sign in here. So now I'm signing into the dialog flow, uh, and so. If we're looking at Dialogflow, we just I had created this agent. It's called a YumBot, okay? And it's because we're talking about the pizza use case. So this is the main interface, and it's not. Well, I'm not talking just about Dialogflow here, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like and how you actually set it up yourselves, right? So you're, you're familiar with the interface when you go back in later. So this is how you actually create an intent, and these are a list of some of, of my intents that I have gone and created for this specific bot. So in the case of order pizza, you can provide training phrases, right? Give me a plain pie. I just found out today that that's only thing, a thing people in New York say. But actually out here, it's give me a pizza, a plain pizza. So I added that for our demo here in case anybody tries to get smart. Um, and then there's action and parameters. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And then a text response. And the really cool thing about this, if you, if you started using these platforms in the past, it used to all be text. It used to be chat, right? Whether it was SMS, Facebook Messenger, something like that. But now, with the phone and uh, the voice gateway, you can uh, listen to this being spoken back to you in a really natural way. So when we look at fulfillment, this is how we're actually sending back actions to our client API, right? So it says enable webhook call for this intent. So what that means is it's going to send back the action that someone's ordered a pizza back to my, uh, back to my webhook that I just showed you uh, uh, a second ago. And so you can set that in your fulfillment. So if you see here, I set up my ngrok. Okay. And now really simply, I just wanted to show you for a second here. This is the phone gateway that we're using. So this is kind of the crux of the demonstration. Uh, it's a really important feature. So I just showed you how uh, a fulfillment happens. Let me go back very quickly into our application. OK, so this here is what's going to happen when uh, a call actually gets escalated into the uh, pizza center or the, the restaurant, right? Uh, so when the call is escalated, an action will come through. We'll disconnect that initial call leg. Uh, via a, a series of requests that we make to Nextmo to essentially just disconnect that second call leg, right? And then we'll reach out to what we call the support number, but really simply, that's the, uh, that's the restaurant's phone number. Okay, so this is, here we go, the... Uh, would you like for us to do that? OK. So let's go ahead and actually try running the demonstration. I have my, uh, I have my server up and running here. Looks like someone's already tested it. Someone out there probably who's getting excited. Uh, I'll restart the server. And we're listening for any events here. OK. So, uh, so let's go ahead. And I think we're going to have someone dial into the number Chris. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. You have the number, right? Yeah. So we'll see if it works on the fly. But uh, if it doesn't, we'll fix it together. They paid for that. They paid for that. I'm very. You got another question? Can I order a large pie? Hello? You were asking me about pizza, right? Yes. Can I order a large pie? Would you like fries 
with that? Just kidding. Will that be all? Yes. All right, there we go. Yay, it worked. Well, so what's actually what's hap actually happening though? I don't know if you did you hang up or are you still connected. Oh, you hung up. You hung oh, up. I did everything I needed. Okay, to okay. you did. Oh, yeah. I didn't put on the notes that you if you stay on. Oh, so anyway, we connected. Uh, so we connected the agent. Uh, so we connected your call leg. Now you're going to be connected back into the bot, but that's okay. So we actually connected into the restaurant. We we uh, we handed off the call with the context of the call, right? That you're ordering a cheesy pizza. So you get someone on the line, and it says text to speech, something like, you know, Chris is on the line, and he's ordered a cheesy pizza, and then the person, you know, gets connected in that conversation. So uh, it's fairly simple implementation. Uh, there you go. There he is. I knew he got the call. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> no, you said pie. He said pie. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Lawrence. Okay. So thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, hope it was useful. Nobody can see the lines here, but okay. Um, so just to kind of sum it up, uh, we are getting very excited about many of our customers are actually implementing these things. Right, we have get, uh, we have that get uh, taxi that is doing bots for the first tier of support. Where is my driver? We have RBS that is doing it for where? What is my balance in the bank? So, we try to take a very practical approach. I think there's a lot of uh, hype of AI and machine learning out there, and and hard to understand how do you pull it into real time scenario. So we try to take a very simple scenario and show you how it's done. And really, the, the components here, you don't need to go and do complex CTI uh, integrations. You could use simple APIs to connect the voice uh, thread or connect a messaging thread, d implement a bot with one of the uh, players out there that, uh, that exists, and do easy escalation to call centers that we have a lot of examples of that. So there's a lot of sample code around uh, how to do it. And of course, we're here to support you guys if you want to ask more questions. Thank you.